Okay, by my guesstimate, I believe that about 90% of people want to go to the gym so that they can maximize the amount of weight loss, okay? But weight loss is a really difficult thing. So there are things you can do that uh, I've, I've been thinking about this for 20-some years. And there's three parts of the body. There's the, kind of like the shoulder section, the leg section, and the core, which is the center part of your body. But I'm going to talk about the upper part of my body and how I developed a specific type of exercise to do a full range of motion. And I'm going to start out with a real light weight that everybody could do in their house because everybody has something that weighs a little bit of thing. You could be using a can of uh, peas. You could use a, you know, you can use a sack of vegetables. You can use about anything. But what I call is, I'm calling it the figure eight. So look at the, the, the I'm making a figure eight. Okay, now that doesn't seem like a big deal. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain a lot of the principles after I do the exercise, but I, I start out the exercise by doing over as far as I can over here, and I do a figure eight, and I start intersecting all the figure eights in my mind. I'm just looking at the visual. So they, they just continually connect. And I'm going all the way down, all the way up, all the way top, and then I just keep doing figure eights, right? And this is really valuable because it's a full range of motion. Oops, my one bottle's in the way. Okay, so I do that, and then I switch to the left hand, Oops. and I start over doing a figure eight. My left hand, I'm right-handed person, so it's more difficult to uh, do the figure eight with this, but it's really good for an older person, especially to uh, fine tune their coordination. Now, you could be using a can of peas, a can of corn, you could be using anything that has any kind of weight. And of course, you could go buy some weights, right? But I don't want anybody to ever say that they don't have the ability to do these things because. They don't want to go to the gym. This only takes about five minutes, right? So I'm doing a complete. But I'm normally doing this with this bottle, okay? And I didn't want to discourage anybody. But uh, I take a two-liter bottle and I do it, right? So, but I'm doing a figure eight. When I really want to be exercising, I put my hand on the end of it. And I do this. I'm not very good at doing it that way at this amount of weight. But I also do an exercise where I I do an exercise like that. So I'm just um, giving you an idea of what I'm doing so that you can um, refer back to this video again if you just want to kind of get a remembrance of what I'm doing. Now I'm going to explain kind of the technical part. How much weight have I lost in one day? Okay, I've, wa I've lost literally 10 pounds in one day, and it's quite by accident, but I often get on these, uh, like, say, 12 to 24-hour bus trips, and it's vibration, right? And the bus kind of bounces a little like this, right? And so for 24 hours, I, I exercise, and I get, off the, um, I get off the bus, and I've lost, like, 10, 10, 10 pounds. I remember making, like, two two or three 33 hour trips from one from Chile all the way to um, southern Chile, Punta Arenas, then from Rio Gallegos to Argentina to um, Rio de uh, Buenos Aires, which took about 33 hours. And I made another trip into Brazil for 33 hours. I made like three of these trips within like the course of two months. And you lose a lot of weight, okay? Because not by doing any exercise, it's just by exercising all the cells, okay? What happens is, is when the body vibrates, all the cells are in a sense exercising, okay? And this is very, very important for your body. So like the runners, when they're jumping up and down, they're exercising for sure, probably their legs very, very good, and they're getting the lymph to flow really good. 
They're doing a lot of the core body, and they're, they're doing sort of a, a very short range of motion. They're not actually doing it. They say that George Foreman, <laughs> one of the boxers, one of the most uh, famous boxers of all time, used to run with like, I don't know, like a two pound weight in his hand, and he would be boxing as he goes down the road. And what is he doing? He's getting the full range of motion as he, he he's like fighting because the punches can come in from any direction. So in a lot of ways, the most most extra, the people with the greatest um, physical shape is is in a way a boxer. Okay, and um, but what we want to do is do the same thing, but in something that we can do. Okay, we're not really going to be able to run. Very few people are going to be able to run like five miles with the. Um, just two of these in their hand. If, if you're walking and you carry a couple bottles of water you, and you sort of wave your arms around and move it around, you're, you're doing both the, the upper body and the lower body. You're not doing the core body that much, but there's three parts of the body. So um, anybody that works out in the gym, they'll do like arms one day and then they'll rip them and they'll, they'll take a rest and they'll do the legs the next day or they'll do a three thing. They'll do uh, arms one day, core body, legs, arms, core, and they work out every day of the week, okay? And uh, they do sets of, you know, like three sets of 12 or 15 and they rip, rip the muscles because when you exercise, you rip the muscle, but most of you just want tone, okay? So I can't really bulk out in, in a, get bulkier. I can't grow much muscle in, in a room. I could if I really did a lot of high reps, but I need to increase the weight and I don't really, you know, it's very hard to get beyond about a two liter bottle of weight. Okay, but this is what I'm calling the figure eight full range of motion. So full range of motion is the idea that you're, you're all possible directions. And uh, contrary to what you think, you're not getting a full range of motion by walking. That's about the least amount of motion you can do. You just got really your legs and your, a little bit of your hips and some of your glutes and you're very, very little, it's very low in testing and you can't, it's technically almost impossible to exercise enough to lose weight, okay? If you do any kind of calculation, you'd have to be on a, like a Stairmaster for six hours a day to actually lose weight uh, uh, by exercise. You have to push do a push away from the table to lose weight. But um, there's um, a lot of things. When I, when I was younger, I used to drive tractors, okay? And I would go out in the field and you drive whether you're disking or you're, um, you know, you're running a rake, hay rake, or I was always the one that had to do the uh, bush hog because I was the only one that wouldn't fall asleep on the machine. And I would stay on this machine for 10, 12 hours a day. And I'm always laughing when somebody complains about a 16 hour plane fare, uh, plane trip to anywhere or 10 hour, eight hours. I go, Man, I used to sit on tractors and um, do it. But I mean, you have all sorts of uh, like little mental games. So this was a way that I learned to control my focus by sitting on tractors for hours after and listening to the grinding noise of tractors. I really don't like uh, to listen to a diesel tractor. But, um, and people get on motorcycles and do this voluntarily. Okay, but uh, riding a tractor, I lost a lot of weight just because of the vibration. It's vibration. So my friend Jeff was talking about a guy that had a thing at some sports um, show in Fort Wayne, Indiana, where it actually vibrated the whole body. Actually brilliant, okay? And, but they wanted like a $3,000, but they discounted down to $2,000. And I kept thinking, I, if I was in the United States, I would make one of these things because, you know... I don't know, $300 later, I'd have one. But you need to vibrate your whole body. But in the, op op in the absence of the ability to vibrate your whole body, you can buy like pads that um, you can put on your body and like you can put them on your arm and it'll vibrate it. But you have to keep moving them all over the place. It could take a long time. If you have the money, you could buy 10 of them and you could put them on your body. On the other side is I'm not sure you're not... Uh, 
destroying your electrical uh, chemical synapses in your body by having that much electricity around you. Better to do something in a way that is very natural, okay? So when people move around, they're naturally moving. But uh, we, we, you have to have uh, patience to exercise. And very few people have the patience to exercise. And I, I would always laugh when I was in the gym. I worked out in the gym for almost 15, 20 years at least. Um, every day of the week, absolutely every day as a routine. It was my habit to go to the gym about 5 o'clock every day. Okay, but the, um, you, when you make it a habit, it becomes part of who you are. Okay, so one of the sad things about me traveling is trying to develop that kind of uh, routine in the room. Um, but this, this routine that I'm talking about is kind of a takeoff of uh, Tiny Habits. And Tiny Habits, in the, in the book Tiny Habits, he talks about coupling up one thing with another. So like when you're making coffee, when you're waiting for the coffee, you can do this exercise. When you're waiting for, you know, something to happen, anything processing, you can wait. Uh, like if you're waiting for somebody to deliver something to you, or there's any kind of times when you're just standing in line, okay? But you can do exercises uh, in your house. There's always something you can couple it with. And that's uh, the Tiny Habits book. Okay, but um, you can use bottles. You can use big bottles, little bottles. I use. I normally use a one-gallon water bottle, which they don't seem to sell in Colombia. Okay, but uh, I can't seem to find them now. They're coming out with these really big two-two-liter bottles, and I don't know. It's not the same. I like the handle on the thing because I can sit there and exercise my wrist. So what I'm trying to do is get every strand muscle in my body exercised. So there's there's all these muscles, right? You got a muscle on this side, this muscle on this side, you got muscles everywhere, they're wrapped around, they're woven around. If you ever look at the uh, one of them, get on the internet and search for a picture of the muscles of the body and you can see that they're just wrapped around. Absolutely everybody in a way is cut, okay? One of the things we say in, in the gym is to get cut. To get cut doesn't happen by exercising that much. It really works more by diet, okay? But to get cut, you also have to have good tone, okay? The tone of the body is what sort of leaves you as you get older. Um, I have found that by doing a limp massage, Barry Nicholson recommends this six-point thing. I do it every day in the shower, and I do it actually with my towel as I dry off. But this limp massage is absolutely amazing for mental acuity, okay? But what am I doing? I'm trying to exercise all the different parts of my body. See, when I, when I used to be on the farm, I know that walking, because everybody always acts like walking some sort of great exercise. And I said, baling hay, grabbing a bale of hay, turning around, throwing it up like that, this is the ultimate exercise. And we used to do this 10 to 12 hours a day. All summer long, we baled about 600 tons of uh, kind of a little bit heavy hay because we got paid by the ton, right? But... Um, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to tell, the other, the other day one of my friends was talking about doing some landscaping in the yard. And what he did, he went out and landscaped and he planted, he bent over, he did all these things. And he used muscles that he never uses, right? He, does, he uses a certain set of muscles. And what we do when we walk, when we do anything, we only use a limited amount of muscles. So how to get all the muscles being used. So I'm, I'm trying to exercise like half of my body up here and all my shoulders. So when I'm doing this figure eight, figure eight, I'm, I'm going all directions, right? Over this way, this way, this way. And I'm getting all that shoulder, half my body upper level. I'm not doing my neck, which I really do recommend people do, which is if you really want to be smart, you get on the side of a bed and you, you, do all sorts of exercise with their head hanging off the bed. But um, the shoulders here, I, I've got different exercises for the core body. I got different exercises for the legs. And all of these exercises take, they, they only take about, I don't know, three minutes to do, right? Five minutes to do. And I can do them while I'm, 
I actually heat up water with an immersion heater, and by the time I, I can do this exercise, by the time the water heats up. Sometimes I'm heating up water to wash my clothes. I'm in Colombia right now, and I they don't seem to have, there's such a great community here that they don't have any laundries. Uh, everybody is living at such a good level that uh, they, they don't really need a laundry. They don't have tourists. Okay, but when my friend was having problems in the landscaping thing, it was because he didn't have, he, he had no way of exercising the full range of motion. And then the length of time that you work is a, is a correlation too. See, the variable, when you're exercising, you can, you can do like one set of 10, or you can do three sets of 10, or when you're working in the yard, you're doing it for 10 hours, and it's an overstraining of your muscles. Uh, but generally, if you have the right tone and you're not um, using the tools and everything in the wrong way, most people can kind of do it. But they, you know, I'm always laughing because a lot of times I carry a 60 pound backpack, and um, normally after walking through the airports with this and going on a 12 hour plane trip and all this stuff, the next day I'm I'm pretty beat. Okay, I need a one day off. I see when you. When you exercise, what you do is you rip the muscles. You literally rip them. They rip, and when they when they grow back together, they grow bigger. So it's actually a ripping of the muscles and grow back bigger. So when I go on one of these 12-hour trips, I'm doing a lot of exercise, and I'm ripping the muscles. So I get a lot of exercise because I carry a backpack. I'm not going to ever go to a trolley backpack because, well... I'm just not going to do it because, well, I would like to call people names that use these kind of carts. Don't get me wrong. There are times in Europe where I have a wheelie cart, okay? Not a wheelie. I get one of these extra carts uh, because in Europe is where the most exercise I ever get. I get the least amount of exercise in, in the 200 normal countries. In the overdeveloped countries, like, you know, where the cost of everything is outrageous, that's when you walk the most. So the United States and uh, Germany, France, these are places where it's unbearable amount of exercise. Okay, so what, what I'm trying to do here is explain to you that we need a full range of motion. I'm going to tell you some points, some, some bulleted points on how you can do it. And I can put this uh, Google Docs in the uh, video, but you can do this anywhere, absolutely anywhere. No special equipment. You can have a can of peas. You can have a bottle. You can have a five-gallon bottle. You can lift a chair if you wanted to, if you're strong enough. It also makes um, blood flow to the skin. A lot of people want to have a beautiful face and beautiful skin, and they want to look. The reason why they go to the gym is to look uh, more beautiful. So the way to do this is you got to get the blood to your skin, right? So moving your body is a way of getting the blood to your to your skin okay and so exercise how to get all the blood things like I turn on really hot water then cold water hot water and I exercise the skin okay but I'm on this big kick where I'm putting a cod liver oil and a couple uh, I'm doing a lot of things to make my face younger by feeding it uh, minerals and I'm feeding it a multivitamin liquid and I mix it with cod liver oil which has omega-3 and trying to exercise the lymph gland and I'm doing all sorts of things to uh, get younger okay but the number th so the blood flow to the thing to your skin number four is arthritis and inflammation okay arthritis and inflammation in a lot of ways is the lack of exercise it's not too much exercise so what there's a synovial uh, fluid that goes around the joint. I just was studying it this morning. There, in between the joints, there's actually this fluid. And in a lot of ways, what would be best is if you uh, exercise the joint, not in compression, but in the opposite. So the compression is when I would push up, right? But the I'll stand up and do this. But when I hang my arm down like that, that is, and I'm exercising, the joint is being pulled apart, right? pulled apart. So I'm doing an exercise for this joint, my elbow joint, but it's pulling that joint apart. That is what 
thing. I think everybody that has arthritis needs an inversion bed, okay? And they need to, to pull the joints apart, okay? And they don't need to compress them. But when you, lubri when you exercise, you actually lubricate the joint, and it uh, pumps things. So I, I'm constantly trying to lubricate my spinal column. My, I have a lot of problems in my hip area and my, my knees, and I've came up with some very specific exercises to walk better. And it's a lot of to do with lubricating the joints. But there's two types of exercise. There's compression, things that push, push on your joint, and there's things that pull on your joint. Try to do the opposite of pushing, okay? And that will lubricate it. So if you're in an aversion bed and you're upside down and you're doing some exercise, you're basically uh, uh, creating space so your spinal column, then when you got stenosis, which is really a painful thing, it's, a, it's like a drying of the spinal column and all your, all your little discs are getting closer. You need fluid there, okay? But the, what I'm doing right here is when I'm going lower, I'm, I'm decompressing my joint. When I go up higher, I'm, I'm compressing it. So I'm doing actually both. By go, going low, it's pulling on my joint. When I go up, it pushes. So this figure eight exercise is a full range of motion. And then, again, you can do that with your hand on the end of the bottle. And I know a lot of you uh, just need a little bottle, or, or some of you will just start out with just your hands, okay? But the, the goal is, is to do it regularly. And if you couple it up with something you're waiting for, like your coffee to brew, you'll be doing it every day, and after a while, it becomes a habit. It becomes kind of fun and whatever. Okay, but... Uh, the muscles stabilize the joints. So for you to have stable joints, you need to exercise the full range of motion. When I had extreme, I was extremely strong, much stronger than weightlifters when I was baling hay. Because baling hay for 10 hours a day and getting you know fit, fit enough to do this every day is a sort of a more um, a f explosive force energy than just doing Weightlifting. Weightlifting is such a restricted thing. You see how, if you watch weightlifters, they will do everything to isolate one muscle, but they're not really well-rounded, okay? They're not a well-rounded, balanced body. They just got a few areas that are real rich, uh, big, and they, they couldn't go do construction work without having a lot of problems. Yes, they could do it, and they might be fit enough, but really, probably for construction work, you need to do more aerobic exercise, right? Okay. But you got to de... Uh, synovial fluid is a thick, vicious fluid that you need to get to come in. And you might look up this word, synovial fluid, because this is what's happening in your joints when you have arthritis, is this whole area of all this fluid in there is having problems, okay? And I believe that a lot of it is mostly uh, arthritis is just eating the wrong food. Sugar and wheat, big ones. The big killers are sugar and wheat. You give up sugar and wheat, probably most of your uh, arthritis will go, go away. So you want to take pressure off the joint instead of compressing it. You want to do limp. limp the limp glands um, are like in the side of your neck. They're all over. They're in your armpits. They're on the back of your legs. There is no blood flow for these. There's no pressure system. So the only way they work is if you move. So this is another thing that it's doing. You're, you're getting the blood, uh, the, the limp to flow, okay? And you're achieving the maximum, number 14, um, the, well, number, you work all, you activate all, okay. Number 10 is activate all the cells. So this is activating all the cells. Number 11, you work all the muscle strands. Okay, I really want you to think about it. You want to get every strand of muscle moving from every different direction. So that boxer driving, driving running down the road, carrying a couple pound weights or five pound weights, jumping like that. He's he's going like this. He's moving every every possible direction. Okay, and what weightlifting does is just one way, right? One way or just this way. It's not a full range of motion type thing. Aerobic exercises is. Often aerobic is 10 times more uh, healthy, and a lot of the men won't do this because um, 
well, it's kind of difficult to do it because you feel kind of vulnerable because you're surrounded by women. And uh, on the other side, or in uh, yoga, it doesn't really, it's just a stretching thing. Stretching's really good, but uh, to, st- to live longer, you've got to um, really get the heart going and you really get to, you need to get the muscle tone. Yoga is just sort of a lightweight thing that's sort of trendy because it's uh, very good at stretching. It makes you feel good. But you tone up your body. You work all the muscles. Visualize with the mind's eye. One of the things that people have problems with is as they get older, they cannot see. Okay? And um, they they lose contact with uh, between their hand and their eye. Okay? And I'm going to talk about this a little bit. But, but moving this and watching it with your eyes, your eyes are getting exercise also. Okay, so it's, again, every part of your body. Um, You're achieving maximum exercise in minimum amount of time. You're stretching your body. I often go to the gym and I take a weight and I I will take something heavy and and I'll hold it behind my shoulder and I drop it like that. And everybody's looking at me in the gym because they've never seen anybody do that. And I go, I mean, I got to get the stretch going, right? So I often use weights, like I, I bend over and I put, you know, 20, 15 pounds in my hands and I bend over on a, on a, like I'm standing on an edge and then I bend over and I put the weights below my feet and then I stand up to get my glutes. Okay, but I use the weights as a way to stretch and you can use these weights to stretch, right? And they, they help you to, to increase the stretch. But be careful here, okay? You can do it in any room. You can exercise your eyes. The one word that I see that is very, I have trouble saying it, proprioception is the awareness of the relative position of movement of one's body parts. Okay, so when people get older, they can't close their eyes and touch their nose. It's to know where your body's at. So this is an exercise that will teach you where your body's at. And one of the reasons people fall, okay, is because they don't really know where their legs at, okay? They don't really know where their feet are at. They don't know where their body's parts are at. They haven't moved enough, and they kind of lost track. The memory, the muscle memory's gone. But proprioception, all these words are in this Google Doc that I'll put it. But it's really important that you can touch your nose and do certain things without uh, without um, having your eyes open, okay? Because you know, what, what if you're going down the stairs in the dark? If you can't see, you lose your bearings, okay? You need to be able to understand where your body parts are to go down the stairs. This engages your brain. I'm gonna show you one exercise I also do um, in the gym, <laughs> which is I never seen anybody do it in the gym, but it's I'm doing it for um, dexterity and uh, coordination. And uh, let's see if I can do this. I don't usually do it with a bottle, but I just sit here and flip the bottle and uh, the weight. I'll take a, a one. I'll take five pounds and I flip it. Then I do it with the left hand trying to get ambidextrous, right? But you can sit there and flip the bottle. If if you, there's coordination, okay? And a lot of the reason why people feel inadequate is because they don't have the coordination. So there's exercises for coordination. And that's probably one thing that uh, yoga is really good at. I mean, it does teach you to be, it pro, the w- word I have trouble saying, Proprioception gives you a good idea where your body parts are, gives you balance, and balance is um, one of the most important things for walking. Okay, I have learned that all I really need to do is one exercise that I do in a doorway, and if I walk uh, heel to toe, it forces me to use balance. So right now, I'm actually walking almost heel to toe. This idea when you're walking like this with your legs like that, that's not uh, forcing you to use balance. But when you walk heel to toe, you have to have balance and that will keep it so that you can be walking for the rest of your life. Okay, and what that's kind of the goal. 
But the muscle tone after doing these figure eights <laughs> is really good. Your arm, the whole chest muscles, the deltoids, all the biceps, the triceps, everything's being exercised, right? But once you get to the point where you're um, doing it, I, I highly recommend that everybody go to the gym every day. Anybody, that, hardly anybody succeeds to go to the gym like one day a week. They, that's just not the way. You have to make exercise part of your life. And I, I, I consider going to the gym happy hour. It's, I go to the gym, I talk with all my friends, I watch some beautiful people doing beautiful things, and it's really entertaining. Here in uh, Columbia, I'm doing it at uh, 7.30 in the morning to about 8.30, and, but I'm, I'm still in the uh, transition thing. For the first 25 days, 30 days, I just, my only goal for going to the gym for the first 25 days is to show up, okay? I don't try to do anything special. I just do a little bit. I especially am not going to lift so many weights that it hurts. So the first 25, 30 days inside the gym, the first goal is to show up. After you've been getting the ritual of showing up down, then start doing it. Maybe you get on the bike for five minutes, maybe you lift five pounds, maybe you do one set, but after you start exercising for the 20, there's kind of a stride point when, like I'm finally reaching my, uh, my energy level where there's enough blood going to my body that I'm actually um, feeling energized enough to lift the heavier weights. And uh, it takes about 30 days to activate all the muscles by just doing a little bit of exercise on all, you know, but you want to do arms, body, you know, the, you want to really want to exercise the, the arms and chest the one day, maybe your head, your neck muscles. One day you want to do the core body, which is your abdominals, your middle section. Then you want to do the legs the third day. So you want to go alternate every day. And it's, you know, there's seven days in a week, so it's not an even number, right? So it's always going to be a different day. And keeping these, uh, <laughs> truly, a lot of people want to keep these little checklists. I think that's kind of a ridiculous thing. You shouldn't be exercising so much that you actually remember what your weights are, right? If you exercise enough um, and you do it every day, after a while, you know that, you know, I could do 40. Like when I stopped, um, I could do 45 pounds curls. I guess it was, yeah, 45 pounds in each arm when I was leaving uh, the United States. And, but I didn't want to get too big in the bicep. I really was working the triceps. I like that little muscle on the outside of my arm. I thought that always was the, the, uh, the best muscles to look thing. And I wanted this. The deltoid. So I did a lot of deltoids, but very difficult to do this to, to to bulk out or body shape inside your room. You can, but it's it's a little more difficult. And I think the synergy of sharing the information and watching other people exercise is ten times more uh, motivating than sitting by yourself. Now, rightly so, most of you. A lot of you feel a lot of social shame when you go to the gym because you're comparing yourself to other people. Again, the best exercise you ever can do is push away from the table. I eat primarily a ketogenic diet with, uh, I, I have learned that if I eat my vegetables first thing in the morning, it, it puts fiber in my stomach and it makes the glucose uh, spikes lower. The glucose goddess is really good on this thing. But I have, I'm constantly trying to optimize this. So this is a very good thing. I'm going to try to come up with a way to um, have an ankle weight that I could fill up with sand and I could carry with me and I could put on my ankle and I can do this full range of motion while laying in bed with my legs. So I could rotate them, figure eight, do things like that. I can't put any weight on my legs and it's very difficult to uh, do all this things while I'm uh, with enough weight to really uh, make a difference, right? To really give you tone. Um, I'm more interested in making sure that I live on the second or third floor of a hotel and I walk up sideways, turn pigeon toe, duck leg, pigeon, I, I, I come up the stairs sideways. I, when I walk up the stairs, I walk up uh, in many different manners, I'm turning my body this way, this way, I'm going down the stairs, I'm doing all sorts of things. Because stairways is an ideal 
tiny habit. When you're going down the stairs, you might as well make it into an extra type of exercise, like going down sideways, going down, crossing your legs over. Like when I come up the stairs, I cross a leg over here, cross over here, cross over here, cross over here. Okay, well, life is good, guys, but the, the goal is to live forever. Now, well, they say that if you live for the next 10 years, today's 2000, 2024, they say that if you can live another 10 years, they're going to almost reverse aging. And I, I do think that most people, I, I almost guarantee I'll live to be 100 because that's genetically part of my body, my family. But uh, I have a good feeling to live 120 years, okay? But the, the, the goal is lifespan. If you're not physically fit, then you're not going to want to live that long. There's a point where people fall down too much. They have too many problems. They just give up. So, again, push away from the table. Be, eat keto. Eat carnivore. Cut out the carbohydrates. Get rid of the, If you get rid of just the sugar and the wheat in your body... It's a radical difference, guys. Sugar in the wheat is sugar is like just like uh, opium. It's it's so addictive that people they sit around thinking about sugary foods, right? Okay, I'm Andy Lee Graham. I traveled nonstop for 26 years. I've been roaming the world for 26 years, and I've been to 114 countries. I'm here, and you're not. Why not? Life is good. Hit that subscribe button and uh, become a uh, Patreon so you can support uh, me telling the, uh, the wisdom of the world. Trying to, at least.